this, the reason we are here tonight is to start talking about developing Kroger's. Um, many of y'all shop there, many of you know that it is, the, the, the site is out of date, it's, it's quite, it's quite old. Um, I shopped here, well my mother took me to shop here as a small child. Um, she lives, I, I looked it up, she lives two miles to the west of this. I live two miles to the north of it. My father lives over here on South Wilson, just a mile from the south. So I say that to say that, that whatever gets proved here or we start talking about, um, I want you to know that I am invested in the site, not just because I'm a council member, but because my parents literally will move me to Mexico and tell people that I passed away or that I ran away and this messes up, right? So, I know the importance of this connectivity of, of this area. So I want to just go ahead and get some elephants out of the room. Traffic is terrible at this intersection. It's awful. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the and, and I know Beth will get into this with the traffic, so I don't want to go too far. We're on a state highway, so we have to coordinate with TDOT a lot on, on things with that. We know we already have meetings from other developments that this main intersection is a failing intersection. It's not great. Um, but there are some things that, with the traffic and the light and the circulation, are kind of stagnant and staying in place. And they're going to address that. Some other things um, that I just want to get out of the way is you know that there's other developments coming in this area. You've probably read about them, maybe attended the meeting at St. Thomas last week. Um, on further down, so between VA and this side, <coughs> We had the old Bellamy movie theater where Harris Teeter was. I know that that has been in the news. I have talked to them about they want to redevelop. That's where Kroger's wants to move to. We haven't gotten any further than those initial conversations. When, those, when they get further, I'll hold another meeting like this. Across the street from the old Bellamy movie theater is the St. Thomas development. Um, St. Thomas and, and Hill Center, Hill Realty. They have existing entitlements. Those were put into place before I came into office and then swipe, slightly tweaked um, due to a lawsuit. But that project is mainly decided because they have those existing entitlements. We, they did hold a meeting. Um, there was not a lot of detail given, but they will have to go through a lot of the same processes and approvals, traffic, stormwater, and others that this project will go through. So I just wanted to kind of acknowledge that those projects are out there. And then like Paula and I live up White Bridge Road. There, there's already been in the newspaper the development where the Chewy's, the old O'Charlie's is. That um, project and I have been talking for a long time. They haven't exactly taken my feedback um, and reflected that. They haven't really incorporated the feedback from planning. And over the last seven years, you've paid attention to zoning and things. If you don't listen to me, you don't listen to planning, I'm not going to schedule a meeting. I'm not going to waste our time if it's not something that I think is going to move forward. Starting off, what's happening there? Uh, on pause as far as I know. I haven't heard from them. So I, I, I wanted to bring all of these other movie pieces up to also acknowledge that I am out of office next August. We have term limits here in Nashville. I can serve two four-year terms. You all have gotten the best of my 30s. And so I'm giving you my best years. Um, so I will, be, I will be out of office next August. So if you know anybody who wants to run for council, please send them my way. Please have them reach out to me. Um, please make sure they come to these meetings because they're important. But that goes back to why I know this, this project is kind of the gateway to the West, right? This sets the tone for development further west. It sets the tone for the whole area, for the whole intersection around, around White Bridge and Harney. Um, and I think for me it's important that I'm a council member that handles it because I don't know who is coming after me. I hope we have a great but I think over the last seven years I've got to know you all well. I know your expectations um, and I want to make sure that a good development is passed and move forward and it's going to move forward. So they're going to get into some more of the details, but I will say I, I met with part of the team previously when it was under a different um, potential developer, and I gave them kind of my wish list of things. Um, they're under a different contract now, but this actually is a really, 
they incorporated a lot of things on my wish list. And I, I don't shoot me if you hate it, but this actually is the, the best development I've seen on in either my or Charlotte or West End in the last seven years. It's by no means done deal. It is not perfect yet. I need your feedback. There's some things that need to be tweaked, but this project, the way that they have incorporated my feedback about the creek and things like that, I've been really, really impressed with that. I'm also having them reach out to Councilman Tom Druckel, who represents West Mead and Fullwood, because this is right on our boundary line. I've also asked them to reach out to Angie Henderson, who represents a little bit further out in 7800, um, and they're doing some small group um, with some of the condo associations and things like that, because I think this is gonna take a lot of input and getting in the information out there. So we're, what they're gonna talk tonight about is, is that this is going to get filed at the Planning Commission soon. I like things getting filed because then we all know we're on the same page and that's the starting point of where things can change from there. So we all are kind of there with that. But we've already set up, we don't have a vacation or time, but there's gonna be another meeting on January 5th and we will continue to make meetings throughout the process. If you're not familiar with this, this goes, these types of projects go to the, so the, the planning commission where there's a public hearing and then it goes to the council where there, if it's approved, it goes to the council for a public hearing as well. And anywhere along the way, I can hit the pause button and hold more meetings um, and get more feedback and have them reflect that in the plans. And then ultimately, my, the feedback I hear from y'all is where I decide whether it goes and it gets passed or not. So tonight, um, I'm gonna let them take over and talk about the plans. Um, I know that they don't have all the finite uses out um, of who's gonna be where or what retail or, or my wish list of shopping center, that's okay. Um, and so they're gonna go for that, they're gonna touch on traffic, but we will get more into some of those details later. We have comment cards in the back, Ask them to set up a website so you can submit feedback directly there. That way it's not having to flow through my email. You know, directly to them as well. Um, because this is your neighborhood. This is 10, 10 acres, right? It's a huge site, and we've all been used to the way this site looks for a really long time. And I think we can all acknowledge what we like to use Walmart, what we like to Starbucks. I would love to Marie Kondo, the Kroger. It needs to change, it needs to update. And so I'm gonna take, let y'all turn it over from here and then they'll do their presentation. And usually I like to moderate the questions and answers so I can clarify if there's a disconnect between developer talk and constituent talk. So whoever wants to take Thank you, council member. Um, thanks for the time you've spent with us so far getting to this point and seeing it through to the finish line with us as well. I'll just um, lighten the room, I think, for a minute in the, with the fact that this computer just told me in about 15 minutes it's going to run an update, so we'll see if the uh, slides keep going. Um, but I am uh, Ryan Doyle. I'm with AJ Capital, and uh, we're excited about this opportunity. Um, you may know a few of our projects locally on West End. We've developed the Graduate Hotel uh, in the Gulch. We've developed the Thompson Hotel. Um, those are kind of in the heart of the city and the hospitality, you know, growth that you would expect in Nashville. But what's really important to us is we've located our headquarters here in Nashville, um, specifically in Wedgwood, Houston. And um, Wedgwood, Houston was a great neighborhood for us to anchor our headquarters in because of our appreciation and capability in restoring historic buildings. So the May Hosiery was a big investment for us to start off. Um, that neighborhood, but we also are very focused on progressive design forward projects. Um, you can see some pictures here of, you know, all timber structures that we're, we're uh, testing in different neighborhoods around the country. And um, we are currently about a $5 billion um, real estate investment portfolio. Uh, we have offices, as I mentioned, our headquarters here, but in San Francisco, Chicago, New Orleans, and Miami. So we've got a breadth of experience in many different cities. Um, but what's really important to us is being a part of great neighborhoods in those cities. And uh, we really think the opportunity here um, is to do something special with a really vital site um, in the West Nashville area. 
You can see some of uh, the design intent that we, this is an exciting portfolio of projects we've done over in Scotland. Um, I think what's really important to us is, and our motivation is to pursue projects that are once in a lifetime opportunities. Now that can be a great 150 year old hotel or building that we're renovating. It can also be a really vital location to a great neighborhood and something that's missing and trying to round out that neighborhood and really bring something that's for the next 50 years, um, if not longer. So. Um, I think with that, I want to hand it over to the design team to kind of talk you through our vision for the project and where we're at so far from a planning perspective, and I'll uh, be happy to answer more questions when we're done. Uh, thank you, Ryan, and Council Lady, thank you so much, especially on a Wednesday before a holiday. I'd also like to thank Montgomery Bell Academy for letting us be here. I know you guys are closed. and. This is holiday season, but yet we've got staff here helping orchestrate this and want to really uh, say a thank you to, to, to you. And also, uh, Council Lady Berkeley, I'm glad you're here, a neighbor nearby, and uh, always interested in things. You're going to love some of the sustainability elements of this project as well. But my name is William Hastings, and I'm, uh, I run a firm here in Nashville uh, called Hastings Architecture. I was born and raised in Nashville. I've lived, uh, lived in Sugar Tree from 1982 on, and I live on Timber, and this is my council district, and, and Kathleen Murphy has been my council lady for the past seven years, and i uh, got to keep you somehow or another term there somehow. But um, I'll tell you, over the past uh, decade and a half, we've, had, we've looked at this site many times. Sometimes we've talked about, we've talked about it a few times, previous council people even, and um, the land owner has been, you know, been approached about selling this land for different development. And um, this is definitely my neighborhood um, and something that I feel really passionate about. And when AJ Capital got involved, and I'm going to introduce uh, my colleague over here to my left in a moment, but when we learned that AJ was interested in developing this site, we got a lot more interested. We worked on the Thompson Hotel together, so I had the opportunity to see the character and the integrity and the quality of design that that company uh, embodied, which was great. And, and then I started working with their friend and architect from Chicago, uh, Jim Plunkett, next to me here. And uh, his work is terrific. And so we were able to partner together and work with AJ to come up with some ideas that hopefully, you know, you heard the council lady speak about. They're pretty exciting. And, you know, nothing's perfect. There's a lot, a lot of work still to do with a lot of input from all of you, and that's what we will look forward to starting that discussion today. But I'm going to kind of orient you to the site. You all know it. Um, you probably all know it well, whether it's your Kroger or your Starbucks or your Agave or your whatever it may be. Um, but, uh, but it is definitely our neighborhood. It's a 10 and a half acre site uh, that sits today. You know, it has a shopping center on it that's roughly 160, 170,000 feet. It was built in the 60s, 1961, so the building's 60 years old. Probably safe to say it's 20 years past its useful life. Um, you can just look at the photograph of the roof and, and pretty much determine that. The Kroger itself and the parking garage, if you haven't ever been behind the shopping center, are basically built encapsulating our creek. So, you know, those buildings, you look at the images on the left, that's building, that's the images underneath the Kroger. When I was a kid in 82, I used to ride my bike down this creek and hang out under this bridge, don't ask, under the building, don't ask what I was doing. But, uh, but so it's, it's uh, obviously not the best uh, habitat for Richland Creek and Sugar Tree Creek. They come together at this site and they basically haven't seen light uh, since these buildings were built, except for indirect that you see in the image. So our plan is obviously to remove that and daylight the creek and create a wonderful place for all of you and the residents and others of, of, for this site. And I'll let Jim and uh, Kim Hawkins, our wonderful landscape architect, is here as well. And, and she's had a huge hand in, in what we're going to show you today. Um, but obviously today what we have is multiple curb cuts. You know, the parking lot is a hard parking lot to navigate if you've driven it daily, like I do, the right in, right out, and one way it doesn't exit, and then the traffic signal works fairly well, connects to, I see Tom Stum here and other people who live, um, obviously, to the south and then in that neighborhood, in that community, um, but, and then the, uh, the curb cut closest to the creek is obviously a little bit of an unusual curb cut that, that exists today because it doesn't have any restrictions on it. It's a, the left turn in there is quite dangerous. 
So we're going to talk about how to improve all of that. And you know, today um, the the site is you know largely covered by what would be in our world would be uh, completely impervious. So basically, the rain hits that parking lot, whatever grease dripped off the car just finds its way to our creek, and that's what we get to do with every rain. And because it was built in the 60s, there were no stormwater requirements or any regulations for water quality or quantity or anything else, which of course our project will do all of that. We'll bring it to today's standards, but also I'd say beyond today's standards. Um, this is a site plan. I went, went away from the aerial. Now you're just looking at a 2D site plan. And these colors are a little hard to see. And if you're in the back, you probably can't see it at all. I apologize. But along the top, along the CSX rail, is the creek itself. And then the, yeah, great. I think it will, yeah. So obviously CSX is at the rear of the site. You can see the parking garage here, the Kroger here. The creek, you know, basically. Uh, is running through the site here. And then there are two buffer areas. There's a 50-foot buffer and a 25-foot buffer. Today, those are filled with buildings and parking lots and everything else. Our plan will be to bring those back and restore that uh, stream area and then make it available and accessible to all of you. Um, I'm going to let Jim, uh, who I was mentioning a minute ago from HPA in Chicago, talk about the design. And I'll be around for questions. And we'll finish in about 10 minutes. Uh, it's about 10 minutes of presentation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, it's all you, Jim. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jim Plunkard. I'm an architect. I uh, want to thank Councilman Murphy and Councilwoman Murphy and for her team for setting this up and, um, and for all the people on my team that have been working pretty hard for the last few months. I'm, I'm pretty humbled to be working with such a a, a great group with a lot of history here, and especially working with William. It's been great. I, uh, I think I was underneath one of those bridges and found an old Marlboro cigarette, but that was his. Um, I, also want, <laughs> I also want to start out by saying that um, the perspective I have on this is that uh, this shopping center is three years younger than I am. So I know it's dilapidated, so let's, let's try to, my goal is to try to reinvigorate this and I take it personally. Um, so big picture here, I just want to talk about kind of the, where we are on this site and the view we have as architects and planners. This area here, which is the flood buffer zone and floodway, um, and as we said, this is 10 and a half acre site. This section out here is four acres. And we need to pull back from that and reinvigorate it and make it habitable and um, a public amenity, and that's our plan. Um, this area here is a half acre easement that connects Harding to the adjacent um, shopping center across the street. We actually travel under um, Whitebridge Road. Uh, and so what we're left with are two pieces of land that are buildable. And the idea here was to take this two and a half acre site that sits out proud along Harding and Whitebridge Road and turn that into something that is a boutique um, engaged um, shopping center um, and then create in the middle of our site um, fronting both the new street that we're going to create which will be a real public access pedestrian friendly street um, fronts both the um, green space that we're creating and fronts the street that we're creating the whole idea here is to um, kind of open up uh, t right now, as, as William was saying, 94% of the site is impervious. Uh, the idea here is we're going to end up with about 40% of this site as impervious. The rest of the site, our entire goal here was to open up the ground plane for public use, for public access. So that includes um, green space along the street, this four acre public access piece, and our town center here, and a kind of paseo that connects you through to um, a big Belvedere um, congregal space out 
floating over and above the, um, the, the creek. Just, okay. um, generally speaking here too, the colors, this is a residential, a couple residential buildings here connected by a common entryway. These are two residential buildings, but they're, they have retail at the ground floor, and these are all one and two story retail spaces here. The idea generally here was that we would put the density or the gravity of our FAR into this middle section, which is sort of away from the two streets and the corner. There we go. This gives you a view from the sky or the air, shows, showing you the roof plane and showing you um, all of the things that we're doing. I don't know if you can kind of see everything is. floating above the creek and sort of give back this entire site so to the public. Could you repeat that? Like, I just couldn't hear too well on the top left. Oh, let see me see if it'll show better. See if it'll show here. Maybe it shows better here. Okay, so right there, I think William walked you through this. So you can see the crow pad here. So the idea is, and I think William was talking about this, this whole area here, we want, we're opening up. This is, uh, and so that Kroger pad, we want, we're gonna take this parking garage down. We're gonna take that area there and expand the public access and public open space to include that deck. So it becomes a floating park. There are precedents, um, and this would be uh, a way to expand public access and create a nice area for pedestrians, for events, for, and let me see if I can go to that. So you can see it better here, I think, right? So that's there, um, and then you can see how uh, Hawkins has opened up a little hole in there. So you look down, it'll light this entire, it, you'll give daylight into this entire creek. Uh, I, th I think this is hard to read, so let me see if I can go back. But the idea here is this whole area will be activated for outdoor dining, for a dog walk, for a pedestrian path. That, I don't know if you can see it. I think I'm going to have to stick on this slot. So you can see here, as you come through between these buildings, this whole thing is our town square, engaging pedestrians to walk up and down the street and through these buildings. And we have retail that fronts that um, so that you can have seating out there. You can sort of see that here. You can have seating out there. The town center, the idea is that it would become a great lawn with a, with a water feature. And this, to give you an idea of size, this is about an acre, and this is about four acres. So ultimately when we're done, we have about six acres of our 10 and a half acres will be open public access green space. Can you all see that laser okay? It wouldn't be more helpful for me to like stand by. Is this a vision of an email? Is this a or it is an email? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can you all see? <laughs> so, and I guess it's good here to point out that um, right now there are three major access points. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the idea is this will be our main access in. There's a, currently an access here for vehicular traffic. We're going to eliminate that. Um, and we're going to minimize the one uh, over on the southwest end of the site and there'll still be access in and out of the, the parking garage but the idea is we're giving back the entire pedestrian the entire ground plane to the pedestrians with the exception of this street which we're going to have slow down lanes um, it'll be walkable we're going to connect across it across it in many ways I think it's, it's got its pluses and minuses. Okay. And, and one other thing you 
if you think about going to the site, there is some convenient uh, surface parking. So if you want to grab dinner on the way home or you know Uber Eats or a cup of coffee in and out, there is some parking around the perimeter. It's fairly limited intentionally so that it's more pedestrian oriented and it's not related to the automobile. But the parking for the rest of the site is all underneath. It's all below this. This whole footprint has parking underneath so that we're not looking at parking garages. We're not um, you know, having that be the front door to the development, which we don't have a diagram that shows that, but it's basically within that black dashed line, that area would be where the residents guests to the retail and the um, visitors would park. The combination of expanding the green space, pulling back from the creek bed, and putting the parking below grade really will activate this site. It, we're, it, it will make it a place where people can gather and feel safe and comfortable and, uh, and relax and shop. The idea here is that we have about 60,000 square feet of retail space that will either, it, the idea is that it's boutique, there'll be some small restaurants, but it's, very, it's highly curated. Um, AJ Capital is good at that. They wanna bring in something that fits this neighborhood. It's, a, it's, it's something that, they're, that the founder, Ben, is, it's what he does. So um, we have two buildings here. This building will be residential as well as we'll have a hotel component in it. This building will be residential as well. Both of those buildings will be, um, again, positioned perfectly for this neighborhood. They're gonna be a little higher than your straight market rate size. They're gonna be a little bigger. Um, I think that's what we're leaning into this community in a way that we want people to stay here for a long time. We want them to be able to have flexibility in their space. Um, and then these two buildings are going, going to be even larger. This will have, this, this is a connected lobby. This will be 45 units. Average size will be about 3,000 square feet. Same here. And these are for sale units on that side. So you're getting the idea here that this is going to be more of the mixed use town center um, area. Uh, this will be the contemplative active zone. And then this area is the condominium area with its own drop off and sort of a little bit of a private Okay, so um, will you want to do that yeah. again? So, if you were, where were you? Where, 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 you, where were you be coming from? This way, Kenner. Kenner. Okay. So if you were coming from Kenner, you can either you can go under. Can you go under here now? No, I need to be here. Okay. So if you're coming down Harden, you would hit the traffic signal. You would take a right. You would head. You could either park. At, this is parking. It looks like a lot of green, whatever else. But there are some parking spaces parallel spaces in this zone. So you can pull up in one of those spaces and go to get coffee or whatever you're doing. Um, if those weren't available, if those were convenient, you could enter into the garage here, right here. If you, if you use the cut through, you can turn directly into the garage. Or if you come this way and you don't park there, you can enter here, which takes you to the garage, and the garage is below. So now, it's gonna kind of be like, what was that? A little bit like the, the Publix, parking underneath the Publix. It's a little bit like that. It's more like that. Yeah, it's very similar to that. You know, you would enter on the side and come down and around. And the site, the high point you know, is out here and it slopes down towards the, towards the creek. And so utilizing that you know, slope allows us to put the parking underneath it more easily. So there will be some parking on ground and some below ground. Yes. Before we run through the presentation, yeah. and we can come back through the questions, so let me make sure they get you all in and we can take questions. This gives you an idea of what it looks like um, above, showing you the one and two story retail out here, all with active roofs, all with either green roofs or places to sit out and have a meal if it's a restaurant, two story retail. Um, we don't have anything planned. This is obviously this is aspirational, and, um, but I, I, um, we're also talking about putting retail in the base here, which sort of sits out proud, and we have a couple drawings that can kind of illustrate what that might look like. Uh, this gives you an idea of um, the, the blue represents the cars, kind of going through. Uh, this is a sort of a tabletop where you would slow down here. It's primarily 
uh, and it, as, as William said, sort of fronts the retail because we want the retail to front the streets. So this is a little slow down lane where you have parallel parking on both sides of the street. This is our main uh, pedestrian street, again with parallel parking on both sides of the street, but we'll be creating all of these connections where you can cross, pedestrian access across of the, the, the vehicular Also, as a uh, traffic engineer, it's been nice to say, today, you know, that left turn in into Kroger that you see happen, there's been, you know, some injuries and other things that have happened in this particular intersection. We're proposing that this would be a right in and right out. So you can go in this direction if you're down the street, you take a right and then you head that way, but you could not make that left in, nor could you make a left out. This is just a diagram that kind of illustrates where we are at. This is, uh, we are 61% of our site is public access open green space, which is significant. And that is illustrated by all of the green paths here that doesn't count the vehicular streets. I think that's an important, um, important slide where we end up with six acres of land. And these are some aspirational, these are great images that show what we want that pedestrian walkway to be along the, the, the creek bed. You know, here is an example of how we could cut an, an opening in and daylight it. Here's a perfect example of a tabletop that's landscaped and a great place to gather and sit and uh, just take it in. It's, it's an incredible piece of property back there. And these are just some other images that are are our aspiration of what we would want this to look like in the end. And now we get to the, I, I think one of the issues, one of the things that I think this, when we, when we pull back and we have six acres of open space and we have, uh, we want to reestablish this creek bed and a walkway and a town square. Um, this shows you the Ingram building, the Manning building, and sort of a datum line that we're working with across our site so that our four buildings try to, um, uh, they're all different, they're all sister buildings, they all have um, different de design details, and, but they all sort of line up and create this little dense, this little. The Manning is the one that's currently being built on White Bridge behind that, you know, so Woodmont, sorry. Woodmont. The, the one that's currently being built on White Bridge behind that So, so the, these, these measures, like 482 is the above, you know, sea level elevation of the bridge. So what we're trying to do is give you, like, but, you know, the Manning sits on a hill, right? So the Manning sits on a hill on Woodmont, and the, at the ground level there is at 510. So the top of the tall, the, there's two buildings at the Manning. The taller building, which is closest to us, is about 620, right? 620 above sea level. Above sea level. So the top of the Ingram building is about 610. These are not exact. And they should say plus or minus. They kind of do say plus, but you know we, we don't have the exact dimensions, but they're close. I mean, they're within 5% probably, uh, I bet. So we've got this elevation that you're seeing. So as the, the, the site changes, right, the elevation here is different than it is here. So we're trying to be as representative and as accurate as possible with what these measurements would be. And so here you see in the foreground is our retail, uh, our retail development, and then behind, which creates, uh, rings the street and fronts this and creates this sort of space. Uh, this this congregal, this sort of town square is, um, and gives us the kind of vitality we need. Uh, and, and we're just trying to balance this and create sort of a rhythm as we go down the site, as William said. We drop down from White Bridge Road up um, to where the Kroger's is, is about 20 feet, and then once it hits the Kroger, it drops another 20 feet. And this is, uh, this is uh, just another representation site section uh, looking from White Bridge. And you can see um, underneath White Bridge, but you can see White Bridge Road coming up and over. And that's the same datum line from um, the Manning up on the hill. Uh, this gives you, a, this is our uh, a, a sketch of kind of the overall development where, um, where we have our retail out front and we've got our series of buildings that march along. Um, all of them are weighted, they're weighted, they're masonry, they're stone, 
they have gravity to them, they have big high first floors, um, and they're all, a, they're all relatively in that range, plus or minus 20 feet across. We've created this little piece that pops up that's sort of the iconic idea of the site is just to create this little belfry that pops up and becomes the marker of the site. And that's the only piece that, it's about a, it's about a 3,000 square foot piece that pops up through this sort of imaginary line that we've drawn across the site. These are some of the ideas that um, are some of our guiding um, images that we would like to incorporate into our retail development. Uh, I think we all like the idea of this kind of equestrian barn um, kind of imagery and iconography. And these are some of the uh, that also brings with it high ceilings and these kind of trusses that um, um, give each of these retail spaces some drama. This is an image that I think is our pedestrian street. If you're standing under White Bridge Road, this is what you would see walking down. You've got kind of the retail at the base of the, uh, of the, of the residential buildings. On the other side, you have these um, one and two story retail buildings that are around the town square at the end of the street. And this is all walkable. Uh, the sidewalks are wide and they're inviting. And um, the idea here is you can see sort of the the turret or the tower at the end of the street to kind of draw you in. And again, I, I, I think this, is, uh, th this gives you an idea that we're talking about stone, significant detailing, significant, something that looks like it has that kind of historic cornice, um, mullionized uh, windows, um, something that, at which we love. We love these images here where there's a little tracery in the masonry detailing, which is very um, Nashville. Here's a building from the town. Here's a little quick sketch of the uh, town square with a little great lawn and a little water feature, kind of drawing you out in the, what we call the Paseo, which is, will be lit, Canary lit, and you draw, it draws you right out to the I'm using all these words that everyone loves, but a Belvedere, a place to walk out and view the, view the, the natural landscape, which we're going to recreate. And again, these are some of the images of those two buildings where we're, we just, we, we like the idea of this kind of engaged uh, level. Uh, those will have um, retail at the base. And then some of the tracery that we like to, uh, we'd like to incorporate into the design of the facades. And I think I'll leave it, I'll leave it here. This is, gives you an idea of our, uh, what we think would be kind of a, the image of what we want you to walk away with is that we have this four and a half acre piece of land that is really something that we want to be pedestrian friendly and inviting and, and, and to be activated too. That's why we're, we have some restaurant space and some seating space out there. This is the big um, gathering space that we're talking about earlier with some cutouts for daylighting. And some of these things will hang out over the creek bed. And this gives you an idea of sort of the, 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 the movement that we are trying to create at the tops of these buildings so it doesn't look so, um, it looks a little more organic. Uh, and again, a, a couple other points I want to make is all of, the, all of the roofs will be activated with either green roofs or terraces or pools. The idea here is we're putting the amenities of these buildings up at the top so that the floor plan, the base, the, the ground plane is active and public. Uh, these are some of the public benefits and we could go through. Uh, do you want me to? Yeah, I can. Um, let, me, Thank you. let me give you all some, but thank you all. Um, let me give you all, I realize that maybe you can carry me over here, so I'll try to stick with the closer to the mic, but I move too much. Um, so I'm, I'm not crazy about the, the view here because it looks like this is all giant and very Green Hills like. But I think it's important for us to see the, the green space from this view and this angle. So keep in mind, this is high to low, how I, how I like to take my, get pictures, because I always look best that way. But so to orient you, something that was really important to me was telling them that I wanted this to be a river walk. I wanted this to feel like kind of San Antonio, or like when I've been in Austin and they have, um, ray, they have their roads raised, but I, I, there's a running path along, along whatever river that is that goes through Austin. 
Um, and so just to orient you before we hop into questions and answers is so this right here is where the Kroger's is now. And so I think something that was really creative and good for the environment from what we've been told is so that ecosystem has been there for, for forever, right? Like the, the creek and this concrete has lived together for a very long time. And so removing the concrete pillars and whatever they're called, but still the concrete stilts that hold up the Kroger's and things like that, that would mess up the existing ecosystem. And so I think it's really creative and I liked what, how to reuse that. It's kind of an adaptive reuse of what is yucky concrete, right? So instead of just leaving it there, which wouldn't be beneficial for the creek and that environment, but then also being able for us to utilize it, rather than putting a parking garage over there or something like that, I think that this is a huge benefit to us because we have the Richland Greenway, which is nearby. It's the most used greenway. And, and this is just such, it's such a compliment to the beautiful Richland Creek Greenway that we have. And also kind of putting those cookie cutters out, it does get confusing of like, where, where the heck is this, right? So I wanted to make sure y'all were oriented that way because I had a hard time when we first went through this. Um, so I think those were the main comments that I wanted to say, like this is, this, this, this is the best use of a creek that I've seen proposed in a development, and that's what's made me super excited about that. There are other things that I'm gonna hear from y'all about that I know that we're gonna um, need to tweak. One other thing, and then we'll get into questions. A lot of modern planning policy, um, the way that land use and new buildings come about, they want buildings built up to the road. And so that's where a lot of us, well, I hear from a lot of constituents, is we then feel like we're in a canyon coming down, right? We're, we just feel like we're in these tall buildings and, and we feel squished and we don't have that, that air and space movement. And so one thing that I like here is because they have that road that kind of bisects the property, having those shorter buildings, the one and two up front, I think that prevents us from feeling like we're in a canyon when whatever happens on the other side of this road develops, right? So if it just went from the Ingram, Ingram building here and then just tall buildings all up front, I, I think that would give a different feel that would be, that would just not be the neighborhood that we would want. So, so those are the things that I like about it. But so the comment cards are in the back, but let's get into questions um, because I'm, I'm, I wanna hear your concerns and thoughts on on and questions about why some things are they, the way they are. So Ed, we can start with you and development team, if you all just wanna come up so I can pitch them to whoever needs to answer. Um, the Kroger employees have been told that they're gonna to go to the Harris Teeter space in May. Uh, two questions on that. Number one, does that give us a feel for the beginning date of uh, some of the work you're gonna be doing, uh, like last week? And the second thing is, um, is there a possibility that the Harris Theater negotiate or the uh, negotiation with the people who own that old site, if that slows down, does this slow everything down here? I'm not, can y'all even answer that? I mean, that's a totally different development team. Um, and so I, I've met with that development team on a very preliminary thing. I actually met, I, I had the meeting at the Taco Bell because um, I thought that would be a fun thing. Um, and so, they have not told me their timeline, and so I, I doubt that you, do y'all even know that, their timeline? Yeah, we, have, we haven't been party to anything with the Kroger negotiation. We heard they were relocating as soon as, or whatever the article said, I think it was last week that was out. I mean, as far as we know, they've got lease expirations that are probably two years out from today. And, you know. So the current Kroger lease is there for at least two years. Yeah, until early 20, canceled. like mid-24. But they also hold the lease to the Harris Teeter from when Kroger acquired Harris Teeter. So, I mean, they have control of that side as well, and they're probably negotiating with your other constituents. But, um, so, I mean, part of our timeline is to work with a council member on moving this forward during her term, and, and then we'll be holding the existing assets and continuing with as many tenants as want to stay there under their current leases as we work through construction logistics and planning and final site plan approvals and, like, a long, long, uh, process after we get through our preliminary SP, but that's news to us that they're leaving in May. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's go here and then I'm going to work over from here to you. 
much more robust pedestrian um, crosswalks. There'll also probably be crosswalk accommodations or crosswalks for bike accommodations, really just making it um, more visible, <coughs> larger space. Um, of course, it's at the signal, so it'll be signalized and pushed by and activated. But, and one thing I might add is the city's requirements today for sidewalk, uh, sidewalks, for instance, like right now, this, the sidewalks along Harding on this side of the street are, you know, basically non-existent. So the city does have, have a requirement for Harding. So Harding Road will ultimately have wider sidewalks. I think, Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there a street tree requirement yes. as well? I believe there is. So the whole beautification of, from basically White Ridge Road all the way to where we cross over the bridge on, on, on our side, not your side of the street, but our side of the street, would be part of the improvements the project would have to do. It's part of you know the city's requirements. Metro will require that upgrade right? this Anybody? one, okay. and and there will be some upgrades to this. It hasn't so the signal it, once they submit and start going through that process with so it was public works. It's now National Department of Transportation and DOT. In DOT will they will propose what they think needs to be upgraded. In DOT will say yes and um, typically, and so but I know that. I will require this. There will be upgrades here and upgrades there. And, and you had asked for a future meeting that we will spend more time talking about traffic, knowing yes. that my study is not complete. And what they mentioned about the, so, like with with St. Thomas and Hill Realty, their their project um, that's still kind of up in the air. What uses they want to do, and then with the the Kroger Bellamy Plaza. Since I know that those are coming, whether they're coming in my term by August or after that, I ask them and I really appreciate that because typically developers try to just take their little area and not look outside that, but I told them I'm not going to talk to them if they don't do this. They're taking into account 
the other projects and the other things. So it's not just the traffic counts for this and what they have to do, but for all of them. And let me touch on stormwater. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't let, me, let me clarify a little bit more there too. So Metro has regulations on stormwater. They touched on this too. The overarching kind of summary is that you have to make, you have to contain the first inch of water onto your property. So that's for, for a variety of, of developments. But that first inch of rain, which we all know we get like five inches in five minutes and then slows down, has to be maintained on that property. Additionally, you cannot discharge any more water than you were before. Clearly, they're discharging a whole heck of a lot of water now. So that that's, I mean, no matter what, that stormwater going that is rushing to the creek is, is going to be better and less polluting. But those are things that no matter who develops this property, um, any property getting developed has to hit those stormwater regulations. Questions? Uh, I also live in one of those. And um, if I did my math correctly, we're talking like 400 plus residential units and hotel space. So that is a, obviously a lot more density put into an area where we already have traffic issues. So traffic
doesn't help in the next six months, but for future projects, in our new development, our new director at Indoc is going to be um, really great. Is there any like, um, public transportation being so? Yeah, so I want to say first, so one piece, even though the study's not submitted, what we have done and we did early in the process, and this is backing up to your first question a little bit, is, is something called trip generation. So how many, if we build, you know, X number of apartments, X number of condos, and X square feet of retail, how many trips in the morning rush hour, in the afternoon rush hour, and over the course of the day are generated by that site? We did a comparison, not to what could be built by right in that maximum, but to what is there today. So the Kroger and the Hallmark and the Minky and, and all of those things. Um, as a daily trip number, what you're looking at on the screen will generate less traffic than what is there today. When you look at the individual people, it's because you're taking, it's honestly, it's because you're taking out the rush. I understand the skepticism. It's because you're taking out the grocery and the large square footage of retail. We look at, we count it all, and we take what the peak is. And why are we not widening Harding Road? That's put more traffic. Widening well, Harding Road is up to the state. Yeah. Let's save that for a future yeah, meeting. We're going to have a meeting just on traffic, trust me, because that's a big piece of this. And, and there are things that we can control. There are things that I can mandate, that Metro can mandate through this process. And there's some things out of, out of our control. So, but yes, when they said that this would generate less traffic, I was like, show me the map, show me those numbers. Because they all work remotely. But NDOT, NDOT does check those. I mean, if their math doesn't add up, NDOT double checks their math. So yeah. they, have to, they have to show their work. And what we're doing for this project, the second part of your question, um, and for all of it, I'm the traffic engineer for all of the projects casting described, and the city came to us and said, we need to look at these comprehensively as a mobility study, which is bigger than a traffic impact study. We've been asked to look at um, pedestrians, cyclists, transit, greenways, the connectivity of those with each of them, and obviously cars as well. And so they will be required, like if um, we have some bus stops along this, and typically it's required to make them, make them nicer. Um, or build them out where it's not just a bench, things like that can be negotiated through. But as for the, the transit routes, that is up to um, WeGo um, to determine those needs and things like that. But they will be required to sign over easements and give easements for future transit, for future sidewalks. If the, I mean, they're going to have to build out their sidewalks. But if there was, you know, if we needed to put a bus stop somewhere along here that in or we go already knows about, they'll be required to dedicate that over to Metro. So there is some forward thinking baked into to that. Yeah. When they built the existing Crawfords, there was a lot of controversy about the waterways. And you're not supposed to build over a waterway. Now, what are the regulations? Is that the state, Metro, or Metro? Well, I don't know what the regulations were, were then. But for right now, you've got to come out of the floodway. You could not build more into, you can't build anything new back there. And so the, it's built over the creek. right, it's built over the creek. So I, I, it would not be approved now, like the current development would not be approved under by right or um, being waving a magical wand to give it to them because that's just stormwater rights. I don't know, There's we have stormwater regs, but this is probably also regulated by Corbin engineers and FEMA too. So, and they are going off of like the new FEMA maps and all of that kind of stuff. And um, and that is one thing that I like is if they all went here in 2010. So when we saw the flood, Metro also has pictures of all that aerial and whatnot that the planning commission um, will see as well. They'll be out of that, those areas. Would this be a phased project or would it just all at the same time? What's your plan on phasing that time? 
I mean, we're still working through that. Some of that's dependent on the existing leases and when they expire. We're also starting to talk with general contractors about how we could phase it. I mean, I think at a minimum we want to get the community aspects of the town center and the you know, daylighting the creek and all the community benefits as accelerated as possible. Um, the Starbucks actually has the longest lease, so we'll have to figure that out. We're working on that um, currently. Can't confirm one way or the other just yet if it'll be all the ones or phase, but there are things that we have to keep open, like that easement with the, uh, the Ingram building to the east, and, and so there will definitely be access through the site even if you build it all at once, which would be a challenge. And so, some things that I can um, require through the SP process um, for the which this would be, it's not just a straight rezoning, it's an SP, so that's a specific plan. Um, I can require that they have to have a plan about where their construction workers are parking or where, you know, uh, how they get there, whether they shovel in or, or not, things like that. Um, I can have them, I can require a community meeting to, to present that, even if though I would be gone when they, when they start building those types of things. Also, what I forgot to mention, in the SP, there are some uses that I just strictly ban altogether. Um, I, I don't allow short-term rentals in any SP. Um, I don't allow cigarette shops, um, any like uh, alternative lending, so payday loans, title, cash advances, those types of things, uses that um, I think are a detriment to our community. I just strike them all together. So, so well, I'm not going to get too much into making sure that there's a, a Starbucks there. Although one of my good friends is, is told me my Christmas depends on it. Um, I can't, I can't guarantee that, but, but I can guarantee you that there are not going to be any like discount tobacco, discount beer, that kind of, that kind of thing there. How many parking? Uh, other parking's underneath, but how many? No, I mean, I think we realize here people drive more and there is a lot of residential. I mean, I think from, there's, the mar there's the code required parking and then there's our marketable amount that we think we need. It'll settle in on how many residential units we ultimately end up with in the SP, but I mean, it's probably something north of 700. Can I say that need two cars or one family? Not necessarily. We usually follow one to one and a half per residential unit, depending on the neighborhood. And you know, downtown it's even lower than one per unit. Um, and the planning commission did just pass, and the council did pass, um, significantly reducing parking requirements within the urban zoning overlay. So you may have seen that. Um, I tried to opt our, our district out. It wasn't necessarily legal, and so it didn't go anywhere. But I want to know that I wasn't for it. Um, this is outside the urban zoning overlay, so they still do have parking requirements, and that's something that we can speak to. I can require more um, parking requirements than is what the code requires too, but also it's a limited space. So. Arlington too maybe has more transit with the metro stops and that, but I mean, in general, I don't think we're underwriting this based on the revenue from retail parking by any means. Um, so I mean, I think, I mean, we haven't confirmed that, but most likely, I mean, as you get further west and out of downtown, it's very unprecedented to have pay for parking. Um, in any direction out of the urban there's core. there's other so. projects where what they typically do is like block off some of the residential parking. So like you, you have a swipe card for that. And then there's parking for retail. I'll require all of that, those numbers broken down. So we see them in the plan. Thank you. 
I can just come into the SP and say, no paid park. No, I will, I will mandate it. That, no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm pretty sure that given the revenue demand and busyness of that Starbucks, that there would be some sort of coffee, coffee shop there.
don't like. There's a limit on your time again, but not a limit on how many people can speak. And then uh, third and final reading at the council happens at that next meeting. Any time between then, I can hit pause. We can have another community meeting. If there's something over here we need to have more discussion on, we can have a meeting just on that. If there's something about the whole thing we need to discuss, we can do that. And that's where I'd like to hear from y'all too for the January 5th meeting. Right now I'm thinking let's dig into the traffic part of it. Um, and I am to say, so you're gonna walk here. So the January 5th meeting won't be traffic, <laughs> um, but it will probably be the overview then. But we will have a meeting just on that traffic because I really want us to dig into how does this play, how does this interact, um, because I want us to really feel comfortable with the, those numbers. So. so all in all, like say, say everybody here gives a green light to this. The longest, the quickest this could ever happen if we don't press pause or have any other meetings is it goes to planning and February, then it would probably go to council in March, three readings, and passes in April. That's the fastest. That means everybody absolutely loves this. It's not going to go that fast. We'll be discussing, you will be seeing me through the summer. So, to get a green line started tomorrow, how long would it take? For construction? Yeah. Well, so even once they get their zoning from the council, yeah. sometime in the spring or summer, sometime before August, just all continue in a forward motion they then they still have to get approvals for metro they still have to finalize their plans in that yeah. time yeah. yeah so after that
firework party. That was decided a long time ago um, and was shut down by the by the area, by the neighbors. I believe that I think they my father was in the state house there. So it was the 70s or 80s, right? Okay, so not as long as Uh, hey, oh, 